Welcome to the first of four videos in a series on logarithmic and exponential functions. This video covers logarithm basics. Let's start, before we get to logarithms, with a brief review of exponents. Everyone knows what 3 to the second power means. It means 3 multiplied by itself with two factors of 3. In other words, 3 times 3, which is 9. But what happens when you raise a number to a negative power? Well, there were people who wanted the answer to this to be negative 9. There were other mathematicians who wanted the answer to be 1 9th. And that second group of mathematicians sort of won the argument over the centuries because this kind of logic was more consistent with scientific applications. And so, in essence, it was decided that raising a number to a negative power would mean the reciprocal of that number raised to a positive power. In other words, 3 squared is 9, so 3 to the negative 2 must be the reciprocal of 9, or 1 ninth. Let's take a brief look at a fraction exponent. Well, there was much debate about what this should mean, but the ultimate group of mathematicians who won the argument were those who claimed that a fractional exponent should be a root, as shown, where the denominator of the fraction is the index of the root, in this case, the second root of 9 or the square root of 9 and the numerator of the fraction should be the power. There's much scientific reason why this should be the case, but for the purposes of this video, we'll leave that aside. When you have a fractional exponent, it becomes a root and a power, as shown here. Well, the second root of 9 is 3, because it's the square root of 9. We don't often write the index of 2. And 3 to the fifth power, meaning 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, by the way, works out to 243. And so that's the value that mathematicians ascribe to 9 to the 5 halves. Let's look at a negative fractional exponent. Same concepts as before. Raising 8 to a fractional power is the same as taking a root of 8 and then raising it to the numerator power. In other words, because the 3 is in the denominator of the original exponent, and it becomes the index or the root of the 8. Well, as we know, the cube root of 8 is 2. And now, since 2 squared is 4, 2 to the negative 2 is the reciprocal of 4, or 1 fourth. So now let's get to some vocabulary and basics of what a logarithm is. Logarithm is abbreviated L-O-G. And when we have an expression like this, typically the B and the X are numbers, we pronounce it the log base B of X. The definition means that power of B, which equals X. That sounds strange. Let me help with that. First of all, b is called the base. It has to be a positive number. x is called the argument of the logarithm, which also has to be a positive number. Here's an example. Log base 2 of 32 literally means that power of 2, which equals 32. I recommend you pause the video at this point and try to think of some power of 2, which would equal 32. Hit pause now. You may have come up with 5. If not, watch this. 2 to the second power is not 32. 2 to the third power is not 32. It's 8. 2 to the fourth power is 16. And 2 to the fifth power just so happens to be exactly 32. And therefore, the log base 2 of 32 is 5, because 2 to the fifth power is 32. It's worth noting that sometimes logarithms don't have a written base. So if you see L-O-G without a base written, 
the base is automatically assumed to be 10. That seems like a strange choice. More on that in a minute. There's also something called a natural logarithm. If you ever see ln, even though it's not, doesn't have the word log in it, it stands for logarithm natural or natural logarithm, and the base is assumed to be the number e. In case you've never heard of the number e, it's a strange decimal, a lot like pi being 3.14159. It's a number that arises in nature, and scientists have, quote, discovered, created it for their own purposes. It's not really the point of this video, but it's worth noting that if you ever see ln, the base is automatically this mysterious number called e. Well, why would we create these two things? situations where we didn't want to write the base. Why don't we just always either put a 10 as the base or an E as the base? Well, it turns out 10 and E are the most typical bases of logarithms. And they come up so much in mathematics that mathematicians and scientists got sick of writing the 10 and writing the E. So they invented these two notations to avoid writing out the base. Now let's take a brief look at how to calculate logarithms using a calculator. Log base 10 and log base e come up so much in mathematics and science that designers of calculators have put special buttons on the calculators for those purposes. Almost every calculator has an LOG button and every calculator has an LN or a natural log button. Let's think about these problems a little bit before we put them in a calculator. When LOG doesn't have a base, it's assumed to be 10. So here we have the log base 10 of 500. But what does that mean? That means the power of 10, which would equal 500. Can 10 be raised to a power to equal 500? Well, 10 to the second power is 100, that's too low. 10 to the third power would be 1,000, which is too high. So it's logical to assume that this logarithm would have a value somewhere above 2 and below 3. If you typed log of 500 in a calculator, you'd find out just that. Likewise, on the right of your screen, natural logarithm, natural logarithm means the logarithm of base e if you type the natural log of 30 in your calculator, you'll get a decimal as well. So if you're calculating a common logarithm or a base 10 logarithm, or you're calculating a natural logarithm or base E logarithm, your calculator has a button for that. Super easy. What if the base isn't 10 and it isn't E? Well, some calculators will allow you to put any number in for the base that you want. And so if you have a calculator that allows you to compute log base 7 of 60 by typing in the 7 and typing in the 60, great. You don't need the rest of what you're about to see here. But many calculators, even modern ones, don't allow you to put a base for your logarithm. So how are you supposed to calculate the log base 7 of 60? Well, let's think about what it means. It means that power of 7, which equals 60. 7 to the second power, that's 49. That's too low. 7 to the third power is way too high. So again, it's logical to assume that this would be higher than 2, but much lower than 3. But back to the calculator. If you don't have a log base 7 capability on your calculator, for example, you'll have to compute one of these quotients. In other words, you can compute the logarithm of any base by turning, into, turning it into a ratio of logarithms of any other base. But since our calculator has base e and base 10, either one of these would work. By the way, each of these has a different decimal value. Well, if they're all different, then how is it that e either one of them would work for the log base 7 of 60? Well, while the green numbers on the left are different from the red numbers on the right, it turns out the ratio or the division of them 
is 2.104 approximately in either case. Now it's important to remember here that logarithms are not division problems. That was just a gimmick to get around the fact that your calculator designer may not have allowed for the log base anything other than 10 or E when they designed the calculator. Let's get away from the calculator for a different problem. Log base 2 of 512. That literally means that power of 2, which equals 512. I'd like you to pause the video right now and see if you can find a power of 2 that would equal 512. Hit pause now. Well, let's see. That's the same as saying 2 raised to some power is 512. We could think of that as 2 to the x equals 512, using x to represent the unknown. Well, it turns out, in this equation, x would be 9. You may have discovered that during the pause. But how would you know that? Would you memorize that 2 to the 9th is 512? Well, most people don't know that by heart. So what you do on a logarithm problem quite often is you just keep raising 2 to larger and larger powers until the answer happens to be 512, or whatever it is you're looking for. But it's important to realize that the x isn't part of this problem. The logarithm simplifies to 9. There's no x in the problem. I just use that as a vehicle to think about what the logarithm would simplify to. You don't need an x to do this problem. If you see the log base 2 of 512, you can just keep raising 2 to larger and larger powers until it equals 512. If it doesn't ever work out, then your logarithm could be represented by a decimal. Now it's important also to realize that logarithms are not problems unto themselves. Although oftentimes when taking a test, you're presented with a logarithm and you would put, for example, the answer is 9. The logarithms play a much bigger role in math and science, and they often end up inside of expressions or equations, such as the one on the right of your screen. Now, what have I got to do here? Notice I have a division, I have an addition, I have a multiplication, which is implied between the four and the logarithm, and I have a logarithm itself. So what does the order of operations say in this case? In other words, where do logarithms fit into the order of operations. The well, logarithms are functions, and functions are always simplified first in the order of operations. So to simplify this expression, I have to first find the value of the log base 2 of 512. Well, as we discussed earlier, that's 9. And now that I've done my functions and other groupings and parentheses, which is in general, your first step in the order of operations. Now I can continue. The rest you probably know. You would work out the numerator first. In the numerator, we'll do the times first. So 4 times 9 is 36. 24 plus 36 is 60. And 60 divided by 6 is 10. This is not a difficult simplification, but it's important to note that when a logarithm appears in an expression, you treat it as if it were part of the order of operations, and you, you simplify that logarithm first. Let's take a look at some other logarithm examples. What's the log of 1,000? Well, again, a logarithm without a base implies base 10. So this is asking that power of 10, which is 1,000. Can you think of 10 raised to some power that would be 1,000? Maybe 3 came to mind, because 10 to the 3rd is 1,000. Let's look at log base 5 of 5. This means that power of 5, which is 5. Well, 5 to the 1 is 5, therefore this logarithm simplifies to 1. Log base 7 of 1. Again, this means that power of 7, which equals 1. Can you think of 7 raised to some power 
that equals one. Well, if you knew this trick that any non-zero to the zero power is one, then you knew that this logarithm would simplify to zero. In fact, we could generally say that the log base anything of one is zero. Here's a tricky problem. That power of seven, which equals 1 49th, that's like asking what power of seven would equal the fraction 1 49th. Well, negative two works. Reason, seven squared is 49, Therefore, 7 to the negative 2 is the reciprocal of 49, or 1 49th. Let's take a look at two problems. I think we can learn a lot by how these play out. These may, on first glance, look to be very similar problems. They turn out to be quite different. Let's examine why. In the first problem, they're asking us that power of 8, which equals 128. Well, 8 to the second power is 64, so this logarithm is higher than 2. But 8 to the third power is way up there, 500-something. And so this logarithm must be less than 3. And if we used a calculator to figure it out, we would get an approximation. That's fine. Let's look at the problem on the right of your screen. That means that power of 6, which equals 128. Well, 6 to the second power is 36. That's too low. 6 to the third power is 200-something. Well, that's bigger than 128. So again, it stands to reason that this logarithm is a decimal, represented by a decimal between 2 and 3. And our calculator would give us this value. So far, so good. But there are often times in algebra where we like to simplify things and do all of our work without calculators. And not because we're training our brains to be smart without a calculator, but there are just certain purposes in algebra where you don't want decimal approximations for things. So let's put that aside for now and see what we could do with each of these problems without decimal approximations, and this will really shine some light on how different these two problems are as we proceed. Both problems are asking us for some power of the base, which would equal 128, essentially. Putting a question mark there is equivalent to putting the x for the unknown symbol there. And so, in a sense, to simplify these logarithms, if they are in fact simplifiable outside of the decimal world, I'm going to have to find the value of x for these equations. And what makes these problems so completely different is it turns out that 8 and 128 just so happen to both be powers of the same number, in this case 2. You may not recognize 128 as a power of 2, but it is, and 8 you may recognize as 2 to the third. The right side of your screen is a much different logarithm because here we have a power of 6, but this is not a power of 6. And because of that unique relationship between 8 and 128, them both being powers of the same number, that logarithm, as it turns out, can be simplified further. Watch as I try to find the value of x, which is the same as simplifying this logarithm. Well, because 8 and 128 just so happen to be powers of 2, I can exploit that to solve this problem for x. By the way, if you're thinking, I would never have thought that 128 was a power of 2, most people wouldn't. As a mathematician, we have to train ourselves to recognize numbers. And when you're given a logarithm problem, you want to always stop and think, is that number a power of some other number? How would you know that 128 was 2 to the 7th? Trial and error. Just keep multiplying 2 by itself enough times until you realize, oh my gosh, 2 to the 7th is 128. That's all we really have here is our cleverness and our willingness to try. Now, 
taking those facts, I can take the 8 and the 128 in this equation, and I can replace them with exponential values. I've replaced 8 with 2 cubed and 128 with 2 to the 7th. Now, this doesn't seem like a simplification. It looks like we've made the equation worse. But we can use an algebra trick now. See the expression on the left side, the 2 to the 3rd raised to the x? There is sort of a double exponent rule in algebra that those exponents multiply by each other. And furthermore, there is another concept in mathematics that if two powers of the same number are equal, those exponents must be equal. This allows me essentially to ignore the twos. The logic here is if two to the something equals two to the something else, then those two somethings must be the same number. Well, how can 3x three, three and 7 be the same number? Well, if x is 7 thirds, as basic algebra would tell us. Now, it's important to remember that there's no x in the original logarithm problem. We were trying to simplify the log base 8 of 128. And that, in fact, simplifies to 7 thirds. There's no x in this problem. The x was just a mechanism to allow us to simplify the logarithm. Now remember earlier, we converted both of these logarithms to decimals on a calculator. It's worth noting here that this is consistent with the 7 thirds finding. After all, 7 thirds in decimal form is approximately 2.667. So it's interesting to note that the calculator and the non-calculator ways to express log base 8 of 128 essentially worked out to the same thing. Now, Let's go back to the problem on the left. That problem literally means that power of 8, which is 128. And we got that power of 8 to be 7 thirds. Well, doesn't that mean that 8 to the 7 thirds power should work out to 128? Let's see if it does. 8 to the 7 thirds power is the same as the cube root of 8 raised to the 7th. That's the definition of a fraction exponent. The cube root of 8 is 2, and 2 to the 7th is, in fact, 128, thus making the point. Let's look a little further into these two problems by embedding them into larger algebraic expressions. Now, again, these two problems look very similar. But they're very different in the way that we handle them without a calculator because the logarithm on the left in green is simplifiable to 7 thirds without a calculator, whereas the logarithm on the right in red is not simplifiable to anything without a calculator. So focusing on the left side, if I replace log base 8 of 128 with 7 thirds and then use the basic order of operations, I can simplify this expression. 12 times 7 is 84. 84 divided by 3 is 28. 1 plus 28 is 29. And so while the expression on the left side simplifies to 29, the expression on the right side doesn't simplify to anything in particular at all. And so if we're doing problems without a calculator, we would simply say that the value of the expression on the right the 1 plus 12 times log base 6 of 128, the value of that expression is none other than 1 plus 12 times log base 6 of 128. And so sometimes in algebra, when we can't simplify a logarithm and we're not interested in using a calculator, we leave the expression alone. So that covers the basic ideas of logarithms. Before we end the video, a quick reminder of something mentioned briefly earlier. What about logarithms that have zero or negative numbers in them, such as these four? When a logarithm has a zero or a logarithm has a negative number in it, anywhere in it, we essentially say that it doesn't exist. It's not a calculable thing. Some people say that it's undefined. Regardless of your choice of words, 
These are not expressions to which we ascribe any particular value. A quick side note, if you ever get into much higher mathematics, it turns out that we, we like to say that there is a way to calculate a logarithm with a positive base and a negative argument. And it turns out to be a complex number with an imaginary term, which, is, which exists but is not a real number per se. But in most mathematics courses, that's not a consideration. And we simply say that logarithms with negatives or logarithms with zero don't have values at all. And that completes the first of this four video series.